Welcome back to Auto Elite, guys. Today, Jordan's going to show you how to change your inner and outer tie rods. If you learn something new, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. It's really important to us. It keeps us motivated. Also, you're going to want to hit the subscribe button. We have lots of new content coming this way. And make sure you're checking out the description for links to our Facebook and Instagram. We always have all new uh, automotive news weekly. I'm going to pass it over to Jordan, and he's going to help you out. <laughs> guys so <clears throat> the car's already up on jack stands wheels already off um, you can look at our other videos if you need to know how to do that first I'm just gonna go over the tools really quick that you're gonna need um, either a a pickle fork to get the um, tie rod out of the knuckle or you can use this it works the same basically but I prefer this it's way easier I'm uh, gonna need a breaker bar some sockets, it's all going to depend on your car. And then this puppy. You can't do an inner tie rod without this. You need it. You can get it at AutoZone Advanced, whatever. Um, they let you rent it. I think I paid 35 bucks for it. And then you get it back um, once you bring it, return it. This is an adapter. Um, my car, is. it was a lot bigger than this. So they also sell adapters that you can rent out as well. It literally just pops in like this and then you can turn it. They'll be more relevant in a little bit. Okay, now the outer tie rod is connected to the knuckle with a castle nut. There's also a cotter pin that goes through. Um, once we undo this, we'll be able to get the actual tie rod out of the knuckle. I've already loosened it up. So, actually I'll show you how this works really quick before I actually loosen up that. You can take your pickle fork jam it in here, keep hammering, lever down, and it'll pop right out. But, if you're actually, if you're not replacing your outer tie rod as well, and you want to save the boot, I'd use one of these. You can put it over like so. This one actually doesn't quite fit, but they do make them so it'll fit over the knuckle, and then this, screw down, and it'll actually pop it right out. But I'm replacing inner and outer, so it doesn't really matter. But like I said, I already loosened it up. So it popped right out like that. First thing you're going to want to do after you do that is this jam nut right here. You're going to want to back this off so you can actually loosen the tie rod. All you have to do is just, you're going to need a wrench. You can't get a socket over that. Get a wrench or some people use a pipe wrench, monkey wrench, whatever. Um, but mine are seized on completely. I have tried copious amounts of this and a healthy dose of this and the goddamn thing still won't cut them off. So, I'm gonna cut it. I'm replacing the inner and outer so I don't really care. Okay, so I said I was gonna cut it off. First step, get some safety goggles or glasses. You don't want that shit in your eye. Get some gloves, preferably a long sleeve shirt. Um, also, when you're cutting, make sure the sparks go, one, away from you, and two, away from hopefully anything underneath the car that sparks shouldn't be going on. Uh, all right, oh, actually with this, you just gotta be careful that it walks a little bit. Um, I did the other side, I didn't really have a problem, but just be careful so you don't lose fingers. Um, if you, this is an angle grinder. It's a four and a half inch. I got it from Harbor Freight. It's like 15 bucks. Honestly, an awesome investment considering I'm not going to use it that often, but when I do, I'll have it. If you don't have one of these, uh, you can use a Dremel. It'll take you a little bit. Or if you're old fashioned, you can use a hacksaw, but you'll probably be here for an hour. All right, let's get going. Alright, now that uh, I cut through this, well it didn't actually cut all the way through, I cut like three quarters of the way through and bashed it with a hammer. That'll work too. Um, Alright, now that we got this off, 
Then we can start att attacking the inner tie rod. The first thing we're going to need to do is remove this boot. Okay, now the boot, there's two clips. There's one spring clip here on the front and then one in the back. Back one's kind of a bitch, but I'll show you how to do this one. This one, just get a pair of pliers. Compress the two. Should just slide right off. Now, um, on the other side, the boot was actually kind of like fused to the actual tie rod. So I have this prison shank or whatever the hell you want to call it. And I kind of just worked up underneath all the way around. Just kind of break it loose a little bit. Just try not to damage the boot if you're reusing it. If there's no cracks or anything in the boot, there's no reason why you need to go out and get a new one. Okay, now that that's somewhat broken free, it's time for the inner one. Okay, now we're on the inside. There's a clamp that goes around the bottom of the boot. Kind of can't really see it right now because it's covered in gunk. But there's a little tab right there. Um, I, this uh, inner ring, it needs to be broken in order to be get uh, to come off. You can't reuse it. So, either A, get a flathead screwdriver, kind of jam it in there. If you can get the right angle, which of course I can't. Actually, I'm going to go back to my trusty shank. Oh, okay, that worked a lot easier on the other side. Just broke it loose. You're not going to be able to get it off right at the moment. But you should be able to pull from the outside. And pop the whole thing off. And there we go, popped it off. And this is still in good condition, so I'll be able to reuse this. Okay, so I can't get the goddamn tool to actually seat over the inner tie rod. It keeps popping off. So I'm going to spend the rest of the night trying to figure it out and I'll get back to you. Okay guys, we're back. It's day two. I finally got the damn thing out. Um, now I'm just going to show you how to reinstall your tie rod and then how to put the boot on and then also how to put your outer tie rod on and get it attached to the knuckle. Okay. Once you get the tie rod in, all you gotta do is just screw it in. I, I just did it by hand. And then once there's some resistance, use the, um, the tie, special tie rod tool. Use a, um, use a torque wrench on that as well and check your manufacturer's um, torque spe specs. Also, before I put that on, I put some Loctite red on. Um, use the red stuff, don't use the blue stuff, but you do need the Loctite on there. First, got the boot. Um, on the skinny side, I noticed with mine, it kind of like got pushed in while as I was pulling it off. So just pop it out. Just make this is what the boot should look like. All you gotta do, slide it over. It'll kinda pop in. Won't be able to go anywhere. All you gotta do is take this little spring clip. Put some 
fires. Might take a little finagling to get on there. But it should slide right on. All right, now after a couple minutes, I finally finagled it on. So that's how it should look. It, it's clamped right over the boot, nice and snug. All right, now for the inner uh, inside of the boot. It's gonna take a little bit of effort. It shouldn't be too bad, but it is gonna take some wiggling to get it over. See, mine was actually, wasn't as bad as I expected. But if you do run into problems, you can get some silicone grease um, just kind of rub it on the inside, get it all nice and lubed up, and it should pop right on. Um, now, remember the clamp that we had in the beginning that was broken? Well, you can either A, get a new clip from your auto parts store, or B, use a zip tie. I'm using the latter. So, what you're going to do is just feed it so it wraps around. Alright. Now, make sure it's pushed all the way in as far as it can go. And you'll be able to see the, the groove where the clamp should be. Just make sure your zip tie is in there. Make sure the make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Make sure it's nice and tight, and then all you gotta do, snip off the end. All right. Now the boot and everything is installed in there. Um, you got your nut back on. Um, should have marked it like where it was. So when you screw this in, it's right where it should be for your alignment. So all I gotta do, thread the outer tie rod onto the inner. Make sure it's snugged up. Just uh, just grab a wrench. All right, they're all snugged up. Um, new tire on should have came with a new castle nut. I'm just going to take this off. Alright, now all you have to do is get the outer tie rod end. Get it lined up with the knuckle. Takes a little finagling. Alright, all I gotta do castle nut on. Alright, I got it on there hand tightened. But again, um, tighten that, use a torque wrench, get that torque down to the proper specs. Once it is, take your cotter pin. Should be a hole. There's a hole in the actual bolt itself. All you gotta do is just thread it through. This is what the final product should look like. Everything's bolted in. Everything's snugged up. Cotter pins in. You're all set. Now, before you. Uh, before you really take it like any long drives, you really should go to an, uh, an alignment shop. Um, bad alignment can affect your tires, it can affect your steering, 
It can be unpredictable. So for safety's sake, go and get alignment as soon as possible.